Hey, hey everyone, I'm Kishara Chisholm and welcome back to my channel, Kishara Creates. I'm so excited because I am back with another painting tutorial. If this is your first time with me, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe, especially if you would love to do some easy, simple, creative paintings. So last time we did a bohemian style elephant. So I kind of still want to go with that vibe, but instead of doing um, something more boho, we're going to do a mandala today which I thought would be a great way to teach you guys another technique because of course um, mandalas have circles and this is a 16 by 20 inch canvas so the traditional compass size is too large I mean excuse me too small for a canvas this size so I am going to show you guys how to create your own um, compass to make whatever size um, circles that you need to perfectly. I've even used this technique in regards to making window murals, which on a huge scale. So this will work for any shape, size, all that good stuff. So last time we did kind of cool colors. We did like purples and blues and pinks, but today we are gonna do some bright colors. We're gonna bring some energy and some passion and all of that into this canvas. So um, I wanna do some reds, some oranges and some yellows. And over top of that, um, we're going to do the mandala details in black. So what you're going to need today is you're going to need some painter's tape. If you don't have painter's tape, you can use scotch tape, whatever kind of tape you got. Um, you're going to want a string or some yarn. I prefer string because it's a little bit thicker and a pencil. But I prefer to use a mechanical pencil um, in regard to this technique because since it has a little handle or whatever you want to call it, I feel like it's easier to tie it around and keep track of it. So, like always, oh, and you're going to need a ruler or a yardstick as well. I prefer a yardstick because this canvas, of course, is larger than a traditional ruler. Anyway, I haven't even got my paint out on my palette, so bear with me. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start at the corners with a red, and then I'm going to blend into that and do some yellow, and then... Well, orange, because red and <laughs> yellow makes orange. And then we'll have some, um, excuse me, yellow in the middle. I'm actually going to use the blow dryer today to completely dry off the background before um, we start with our lines and everything for our mandala. All right. All of that talking's out the way. Let's get it started. Let me actually get some paint because I did not put any paint on my palette. But... This is a good way for me to show you also just, sorry, a good way for me to show you also the colors that I use. So I, for especially for this channel, um, I want to show you guys how to really mix your own colors. Um, I just think it looks better. I feel like you get a better um, outcome when you do your own colors. So I usually use um, red blue and yellow, which of course are the primary colors. Um, you can actually legitimately make every single color with these. Um, I also like to incorporate a green and of course black and white. So let me get some of those, all of these colors onto my palette and then we can get started. Lord, the white paint always gives me a hard time. Geez, why? I don't know, especially since that's the color I use the most, but get some white paint onto my palette. Oh, I hate how that sounds, but it is what it is. Get some green. Lord, I'm trying to hold the paint in my hand and put it on the palette. That's not working out. There we go. Now the paint wants to work. Some black. Oh, and in regards to brushes, you guys, I typically like to just have a flat brush and a round brush and some liner brushes. You don't have to get all fancy and get a whole bunch of brushes. You just want to make sure um, that you do have a round brush so you can do more circular or curved shapes and a flat brush if you want to do straight lines and things of that nature a flat brush actually makes it pretty easy to do nice straight lines all right finally got my paint on my palette sorry usually i already have that done before but it is what it is 
So I'm actually going to use a pretty large brush today. Um, I'm going to use a two inch flat brush and we are going to start with our red. Um, instead of just using the base red, like I said, I like to mix my own colors. So I want to deepen this some more and then gradually get lighter. So I'm going to add a little bit of green. The more green you add, the darker um, that red is going to be. There we go. All right. And I'm going to use pretty much all of that red because I want it blending into the sides. Make sure you get the size of your canvas too. Sorry, I know my canvas is wobbly, but I'm just getting started with this YouTube channel. So I'll get some better stuff eventually. But if you guys do want to support me, you're more than willing to so I can get some better equipment and bring you guys some different kind of techniques and all that fun stuff. All right. As you can see, nothing too complicated as of right now. Just putting some red paint on the corners. Don't forget the sides and the top also because you want that to be consistent. Um, let's get some in this corner too. And on this side. See, my canvas is wobbly. Y'all, I'm sorry. Those are my grandparents. They're loud. It is what it is. All right. Now I'm just gonna put my palette down so I can kind of fan this out some. I didn't add any water or anything. I'm just gonna blend out from the corners. You see how I'm just pushing the paint out and I'm going to the side in a diagonal motion. Don't be too picky about it. This is gonna be just a really fun background. And today's painting shouldn't really take that long. Hopefully, um, the background is going to go pretty fast. The hardest part, I think, or the longest part is going to be um, in regards to sketching out the mandala and all that good stuff. And I'm super OCD, so when it comes to doing the mandala, I'm going to definitely make sure all the lines and my circles and everything are perfect. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that too. So you will be able to achieve this also. Um, it is my goal and mission for this channel to bring you guys quick and easy tutor tutorials that you can use um, to make quick and simple paintings. Um, people always think painting is so complex and it's really not, it's a lot of fun. It's just about technique. You learn some techniques, you'll be surprised what all you can do. So I am kind of crisscrossing it up here and down here. All right. So let's throw some yellow on there. So like I said, I like to mix my own color. So instead of just using the base yellow, I'm actually going to take the same brush. I didn't clean it off or anything because these colors are going to blend together. So there's no reason for me really to um dry off my brush and i'm kind of doing more of a dry brush technique the brush is not really saturated with a lot of water so i'm just going to go right into that yellow with the same brush that i was using kind of mix it into that red that i was already using and make an orange and kind of just in the middle start to throw some of that in there Mix up a little bit more. See, I'm not being picky or anything. I'm literally just throwing the paint kind of halfway through where we put the red. And see, I'm kind of doing crisscrossing motions. I'm not making it um, too smooth or anything like this. This is going to add some texture to the painting, which I think would be fun, especially for the type of painting that we're doing. Sorry if my fro's in the way, but hey, it is what it is. All right, so this time I am gonna clean off my brush because I want to do a lighter yellow, but 
the larger your brush is, the more water it retains. So make sure you clean your brush off a good bit. And I'm just gonna use my base yellow and I'm actually gonna put just a touch of white into it. Not a whole lot because you do not want this to be a pastel yellow. You just want it to be light enough to where it does not just turn all the way orange. And already need more yellow paint. And see, especially because we're going to spend some time drawing and sketching everything out, I decided to use this larger brush. That way we can just go ahead and get the background done. We can dry it off and we can start with some more of the techniques. And see, I'm still just kind of crisscrossing it here and there. I'm not being picky about if it's too precise. The colors are all starting to blend together, so I don't care if they overlap, mix and match, all of that. That's really what I want. That's going to give a lot of texture and dimension um, underneath our mandala. It's going to make it look all complex, like we spent hours doing it, but we did not. And for something like this, you always want to do your background first especially a mandala because it's going to have all kinds of little lines and little sections the last thing you're going to want to do is go in between each one of those lines and I already got paint on me you don't want to have to go back and go in between each one of those lines and try to do this technique it would take you forever i promise so what are we 12 minutes in we've got our background perfect you know Maybe I'll add a little bit more red right there. Just a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of bring it down. All right. And like I always say, um, your color choices are more your preference. Think of it like a recipe. You can use whatever colors, you know, fit your personality. So you do not have to make yours exactly the same way that I do and please you guys if you recreate this painting share it with me because I would like to see um what I love about art is how everyone can take the same technique um the same colors all of that and it's all different doesn't come out the same I love that that's what art is it's about your own individual interpretation of the process all right, I'm going to stop messing with it. Going to leave it alone. So it's going to get loud for a second because I'm going to use the blow dryer to go ahead and blow this to dry it off so that we can start um, sketching out our circles and our lines and all that good stuff to make our mandala. The good thing about acrylic paint is that it does not take a long time to dry. So you're not going to have to listen to me blow dry for too long. I promise. And that's um, also another reason why I did more of a dry brush technique too. That way you guys weren't going to have to wait too long for me to dry everything off. So I've got my blow dryer already set up. I had that set up, but I didn't have my paint on my palette, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and blow dry.
that's good enough. I'm not going to make y'all have to listen to that any longer than y'all have to. So it's about 90% dry, as you can tell. That's what I love about acrylic paint. That's why I don't paint with oil paint. So let's go ahead and show you guys how we are going to start with this mandala. So I got my little pencil and my yardstick. So this is 16 by 20 canvas. So I'm going to mark out eight inches right here at the top and eight inches at the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect that with this yardstick. And as you can see, the background is pretty much dry, which is exactly what I wanted, which is why I made you guys suffer through hearing me blow dry. Yes, I'm very OCD, so it typically doesn't take that long to make a line, but I like to make sure everything's perfect. There you go. And uh, you guys might not can see that, but I'm sure you know how to draw out a line. Matter of fact, I am going to do this with paint. That way you guys can see it a little bit better. I'm going to use, because I said that I wanted to do the lines in black, so I'm going to do a gray. And I'm going to use a liner brush. Just a nice gray. If your line's not perfect, don't worry about it too much. We're going to go back and touch all these lines up anyway. All right. Now, for this side of the canvas, since it's 20 inches, we're gonna come off at 10 inches on each side. And we are gonna do our line for there too. Oh, and if you don't feel comfortable doing this with paint, you could do this with a marker, um, preferably a Sharpie. I like to use a Sharpie. And if you get any areas where you don't want to, don't worry too much about it because we're going to go back and touch up these lines and you can touch up the background at the end as well. Sorry, my easel is wobbling. There we go. Perfect. So we have the center right here. Now, just from the corners, I'm not gonna sketch that out. I'm gonna go ahead and make some more of this gray. When it comes to doing any sort of sketching or anything like that on your canvas, and you're using a really thin liner brush like this, you want your paint to be nice and diluted so it's more like an ink consistency. That way you don't have to keep stopping like I just did to saturate your brush so you can get smooth lines. So bear with me while I go ahead and do that. See, I'm just adding some water and diluting that paint, making it really nice and thin. Gonna use even more water. And I just do it gradually instead of just throwing water on there because you don't want your paint dripping. You just want it thin enough to where you can get a nice crisp line. 
So like I always say, if you do like this and it starts dripping, then that's way too much water. And you'll know once you put your brush on your canvas if you need to add more paint or whatever. All right, perfect. I think I am gonna add just a little bit more water, just to be sure. Pick up my yardstick again. And like I said, I'm not gonna be overly picky. I don't wanna make this too complicated. You just wanna make sure it looks nice. I don't think anyone's gonna come up to your painting and use the ruler and make sure that everything is super precise. Grab some more paint. If your lines aren't 100% smooth, like I said, that's okay. We're gonna go back and touch everything up. If you go outside of any area, don't worry too much about it because if you touch an area in the background where you didn't attend, Lord, I can't talk today. If you touch any um, part of the canvas that you didn't intend to um, in the background, you can always go back and touch that up later. Paint is very forgiving. That's what I love about acrylic paint in particularly because it dries so fast. Literally, you can paint over top of it literally after it dries. Wait five, 10 minutes, or use the blow dryer like we just did, and legitimately just paint over top of it. So don't be too picky or OCD about the lines in the background. See, just make them a line, hold your ruler secure, and just do your line of demarcation. Here, I wanna make it a little bit more pronounced. There we go. And let me step back and see, let me decide. I think I'm gonna leave it like this cause I don't want it overly complex. I always say that then I end up changing something. I'm gonna do one coming off the middle right here. And I'm just eyeballing it. Like I said, I'm not making it perfect or too complicated. As long as it ends up looking good, that's all we care about. There we go. I like that. And because we're going to add a whole bunch of details and everything to this, the most important thing is going to be our circles. So this is all good. Right up here too. Sorry about the noise in the background, you guys. I can't help that. yardstick shifted just a little bit so I'm gonna go back and define that line some more sorry here I go being picky again even though I said I wasn't going to do that I'm trying to line my ruler up exactly where I had it there we go All right. Dilute my brush just a little bit more. Just dilute that paint. I'm gonna do one coming off here. Do one right here also. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it instead of being overly complex and making you guys measure each little thing out. All right, 
And as you can see, the lines aren't perfectly smooth or anything like that. Like I keep saying, you can go back over top. We're gonna go back over top and define all of these with black anyway, which is the reason why I just went ahead and used a gray. So I'm gonna dry it off just a little bit. Again, this isn't gonna take that long, I promise. Is where our ruler technique comes into play so I'm going to get my mechanical pencil I prefer a mechanical pencil because like I said you can kind of put your line or your string right underneath here and then tie it and make sure it's nice and secure I like to knot it or double knot it whatever you want to call it tie it all that fun stuff I like to leave kind of a tail at the end of it. Then, you know what? I need some scissors. I didn't even think about that. So give me one second while I get those. At least they were in close proximity. So what I do is before I cut the string, I... Try to measure out how my circle's gonna go. So put the string in the middle and then kind of way out where your pencil would go so you could see how your circle would be. Make that a little bit smaller. Hold your pencil straight like this, not out, you want it straight. That's still too large. And for this, I'm just going to use the pencil. You know what? I don't think I'm going to make you guys. No. I don't want to make it too complicated for you all. There we go. Once you get the amount that you like, hold it securely so you don't lose that spot. Get some tape, which is the reason why I wanted to dry off the background first. I held it really tight to that area. I'm gonna put the tape right there in the middle to secure it. I'm gonna take my pencil and go around my canvas to make my circle. Like I said, don't be too picky about your lines or anything like that, because you can always go back and touch that up. And of course I would drop my whole string. I don't know why I just didn't cut it. All right, let me check out my circle. And if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can use anything that you have that is a circle. So you could use a plate, whatever, as long as it's large enough. Um, it should be fairly easy for you to do that, especially if you are using a smaller canvas. But I thought this would be a perfect way just to show you guys how to do something else. And I'm just gonna cut that string because it's got paint all over it. All right. Going to get my little liner brush again. Might use a little bit of a larger one instead of using that teeny tiny brush. Going to use this one. And see, even on my palette, that paint is already dry. Just 
squat. I keep adding water, diluting it, diluting it. And you see, I keep kind of twisting into the paint, especially when I want smooth lines because I want the paint smooth on my brush. That way it's going to paint smoothly onto the canvas. And when I use the compass, I did not go ahead and do it with the paint because I wanted to make sure that the proportions were accurate before I started to sketch anything. And I'm going to be slightly OCD and double check on the sides to make sure they are exactly right. Perfect. Uh, let me check down here too. And like I said, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Let me measure again right here. How many inches is that? Pretty much four. Dang it, I accidentally touched right there. All right. All right, if your circle isn't 100% perfect or whatever, that is fine. Like I said, this is more so just about the technique and not making it 100% perfect, but where it looks nice enough. So right here, one thing, another thing that I like about acrylic paint is if the paint underneath is dry, if you put any wet paint in any area that you don't want it, you can just use a clean brush with some water and literally pretty much erase what you just put down. Now, I'm going to sketch all of this out um, with the gray, and then we'll go back and do our black and all that over top of it. So, this isn't too exciting, but I'm going to kind of smooth out some of these lines. And see, as long as your paint is nice and diluted, it does not take a whole lot. And don't worry too much about your lines being too perfect. I'm just introducing a new technique to you guys. So like I said, this is an easy beginner tutorial. So you do not have to be a perfectionist in regards to this. Because it is going to look good at the end. Watch when all the details, all of that fun stuff comes together. See how quick this is. And kind of go around the corners and the sides also of your canvas. It just looks nicer. Let me move my water cup instead of having to keep going all the way over there. I'm just still diluting the paint some. And of course, you guys, if you end up loving the end result of this painting, it is definitely for purchase. All of my original um, paintings are, of course, available for purchase. 
Um, I'm also able to do commissions and custom pieces right now too. I actually am available for that. And I've been working very diligently in regards to um, getting my website situated so you guys will also be able to order frame prints or other merchandise that I'll feature my artwork on. So I'll have a little bit of everything available for everyone. And like I said, in any of the areas in the background where you kind of went outside of where you wanted to or whatever, do not worry too much about it. Like I keep saying, it's very forgiving. The nice thing is that we already did the base coat. So if we do need to go back in any areas right here and add more red or orange, it will be very simple. Instead of um, drawing everything out and then trying to go in between each little triangle to fix everything. That would have been a lot more difficult and complicated. Just smoothing out the lines, making it a little bit more bold so you guys can see everything. Make sure you bring it off the end of your canvas too. It just looks more professional. And see, like I said, this is gonna take longer than everything else. Go ahead and smooth this line out. I'm not taking too much time to be too precise, anything like that. This is gonna be a quick, simple, easy tutorial just to get you guys familiar with using some more techniques and trying something different. And with most um, mandalas, they are extremely precise. All the lines go in the same, um, have the same width around them and all of that. I chose not to do that today because I just wanted this to be fun, something that you guys would enjoy doing and not overly complicated. All right. Okay, let me step back. I always step back and take a look at things. All right, that's pretty good. So here in the middle, I'm going to do, let me make some more gray. Just of course, more white and black paint. That's what you use to make a gray. You want to kind of get that same color that you were using though. So keep mixing until you get that same tone. Then out the paint too. Before you start trying to add detail. You want your paint nice and thin like I keep saying. More like an ink consistency. I keep adding water to it. And I keep twisting it around. That way I can draw with it like a pen. Alright. So I'm going to do almost like a little triangle, but kind of rounded on the sides. And I'm just gonna mimic that for each one. And you know what? I'm gonna use a larger brush for this. I'm gonna take that off because I wanna use a larger brush. Like I said, see, you can erase that. Look how easy that is. Which is why I'm always like, don't be afraid. It's just paint. Paint is very forgiving because it is. If we would have just drew this out on paper and a pencil, I would have been like, oh no. It would have been a lot easier, I mean, excuse me, a lot harder to clean that up. I can never find the brush that I want.
I don't know why I have so many brushes on here if I'm not going to use them. I actually am just going to use my large round brush and speed this process up. So, one line. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. You just want to kind of mimic that shape around. And we're going to go back and crisp up our lines anyway, so don't worry too much about it. I'm going back and making certain areas just a little bit larger. I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I'm not being picky. Sorry, I got kind of quiet, but you guys see what I'm doing. Let me take a step back from it. Step back again. Okay. It's not 100% perfect, but it doesn't have to be. No. At where the points of those go, I'm going to do almost like a little parentheses, but that are pretty close together. See, just doing this all the way around. I keep saying it, we're not being overly precise. We just want this to end up looking nice at the end. Okay, I'm not being super picky or OCD. I did not measure out each little area. Then you can kind of connect them together and smooth that out some in the middle, right where that meets. Bolding up that line, smooth out anything. Just doing some arches or some swoops or whatever you want to call it, however you want to define it. All right, I'm gonna step back again, again, again. All right, it's pretty good. So I'm going to round out 
these lines right here. And I'm using the larger round brush to make it easier. It's not going to take as long as doing all those little teeny tiny lines with the liner brush. And like I keep saying, I'm not being overly precise. I just want it, want to mimic the same area in each little triangle. Add in some more water because on my palette, this is already drying. Like I keep saying, acrylic paint dries pretty fast. I'm diluting it, still twisting into the paint like that. And keep rounding out the sides. Don't dilute your brush too much. If you have paint or anything dripping down your canvas, then you put too much water in your brush. And you either want to wipe off some of the excess water or you're going to want to add a little bit more paint to your brush. But that's it. It's not too complicated. And see, I'm going back just like we did with this part and bolding up that line. Yeah, I'm kind of coming to a point in the middle right there. Just making it look crisper. Doing the same thing, nothing's changed. All right, let me take a step back again. Let me look at this. All right, nice. So, I'm going to do a triangle coming off of each one of these. And we're just eyeballing this. This time we're just having fun. Maybe we'll revisit this technique and be a little bit more precise about it um, when we get a little bit more advanced in our skills, when I show you guys some more techniques. When we start to advance a little bit more, but right now we're just having some fun. Bring it out to your sides too. Don't neglect the sides. Just making little triangles. I'm eyeballing it. I'm not measuring everything out. That would take forever if we measured everything out. And for a beginner's painting tutorial, medallas can be pretty complicated anyway. So I did not want to do that to you guys. I just wanted to show you some more techniques and have some fun and make something that would be pretty. If your paint gets too thin, Add some more paint or wipe off some of that extra paint on your brush. And see the ones on the sides that don't go all the way around. I'm still doing that technique. I'm just bringing it over to the side. I'm going to step on this side for this one.
Let me step back. Step back again. See, not perfect, but still pretty. That's all that matters. So right in the middle, do another little arch. Try to eyeball it to where it's in the same area each time. If it comes off the sides of your canvas, round it off to the sides too. That looks better. Or somewhere like here where you really wouldn't actually be able to see it, just bring it off to the side. Don't worry about it. See here, I'm just bringing it out to where it would have been on the sides. Nothing fancy. I'm not making it perfect. I just want to make sure it looks good at the end. That's it. All right. And like always, I'm going to step back from it. I'm going to thin this line out some more. So since it's still wet, I'm taking a flat brush. You see how I'm just cleaning up that line by removing some of that gray paint and thinning it out some. See how easy that is? That's why I say paint is very forgiving. And even if I wasn't able to do this, if it would have dried already, I could have just painted over top of it. I could have painted some of the background color on it to kind of clean up that line and it would have been fine. Wouldn't have been able to tell. There we go. And see, even me as an artist, I'm not perfect. I play around with it. I make mistakes. I have to fix things. It's all part of the process. I think that's why people get so nervous about painting. They feel like it has to be perfect or precise. It does not. As long as it looks good at the end, who cares? All right, I'm stepping back again. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. I actually think I'm gonna leave it alone. I like that. And I kind of actually like the gray. I might go over it again in some areas just to make sure it's nice and smooth but not everywhere so like before i'm making more gray paint and see white paint and black paint it's really thick because it's really opaque so it takes a good amount of water to dilute it if you use a, a larger brush like this because it holds more water obviously um it's usually easier to saturate it and get it to that ink consistency that you want and see i'm always twisting 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 into the paint i call that load in the brush so twist 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 that way your paint is smooth onto your brush it takes off all that extra excess paint as well so you can get nice smooth lines so right in here and that's a little bit lighter yeah add some more black to that Cause I added more black, I gotta add more water, of course. There we go. Smooth it out. And painting is all about layers. It takes 
patient. See, it's not going to be perfect as soon as you put the paint down. It's all about layers, little by little. That makes the painting come together. Let me take a step back. I keep saying, I always say, let me step back, let me step back. But, all right. Just anywhere where I feel like I need to smooth out any of the lines, I'm just going to touch it up. That's it. Nothing too complicated. And I definitely know we're going to do another one of these that's going to be a little bit more advanced. But for the first time, I just wanted it to be kind of simple and fun. And look how good those background colors look underneath it. See what I mean? Anywhere where I feel like I need to smooth out any of the lines, I'm doing that. I actually really like the gray. I think I'm just gonna add some white and black highlights to the gray. I like the gray. Just wherever you feel like you need to smooth out any of the lines. Don't worry about if it's completely perfect, it's still going to look good. That's why we're using a larger brush too, instead of a really thin liner brush. We just want to give the effect of it being a mandala. It does not have to be 100% perfect. That would have been really complicated. Same thing, if you feel like you got too much paint anywhere, take a wet brush with just water and you can literally erase it, just like I'm doing right here. Usually for this, I like to use a flat brush. Why, I don't know. That's good. Move out the line. Same thing, just anywhere where I feel like I need to smooth out the lines, I'm just going and doing that. Kind of touching up the edge of each one of these. And we're going to add even more detail with the black and the white to this. So don't worry about if everything smooth out perfectly. Like I keep saying, we just want it to look nice. So I'm going to go over these triangles again. And painting's all about layers. So sometimes, depending on what color, well, most of the time you're going to have to do co two coats anyway. It would be even more coats if we didn't do the background prior. Now imagine sketching all this out and then trying to go in between each one of these little circles and do this technique. That would have took forever. And because this technique can already be kind of complicated, I did not want to make it overly complicated. I just wanted to introduce you guys to the technique. Doing the same thing, just touching up any areas where I feel like the line needs to be a little bit more pronounced or smoothed out. That's all I'm doing. Saturate my brush some more, add some more water. And look how far along we came in an hour. Believe it or not, we're almost done. It's not going to take much more than this. Because when it comes to the black and the white, we're just going to add highlights. We're not going to outline everything. And see, this is why I'm using the larger brush too. So we can just kind of smooth it out quickly. You don't have to worry too much about the lines being too precise. We're just putting it down there.
get smoothing out the lines like I have been. Gonna touch up the lines in between. I am going to go back to that original round brush. It's not as small as a liner brush, but it's quite a bit smaller than the brush we were just using. And these little lines right here, kind of touch them up. Don't worry if they're not perfect we just want it to look pretty Diluting, get some more, add in more water. Let me step back again. I know I keep saying that. Now I am being slightly OCD, but hey, I'm just being myself. Let me step back again. Yep, I like that better. Now, especially when you're eyeballing something like this, it's not going to be 100% perfect. Um, sometimes imperfection is what makes the piece beautiful anyway. Step back again. Yeah, I like that better. All right, keep touching up these lines. Not being overly precise, just smoothing out any areas that I feel like need to be smoothed out. That's all I'm doing. Smoothing out the lines. Same thing. I'm just smoothing out the lines. Double checking, and again, I'm going to step back again. All right, I like that. Perfect, so we are going to start doing our details with the black and the white, and then believe it or not, we're pretty much going to be done. Maybe some of these areas where you might have some lines where you sketched it out, we'll touch up some of those areas, but for the most part, we're basically done. So I'm going to get a little bit more white paint just because that paint has a good amount of black in it and I don't want it gray. I want it white. Most likely going to turn gray anyway because this is still, it's mostly dry, but there's still little areas where it's wet. And when it comes to the white, In the black, like I keep saying, I'm not going to be overly precise. I'm not going to cover up any of all of the lines or anything like that. I'm just going to add a little touches here and there. Let 
this white needs to be diluted a good amount. And I'm gonna use that same brush that I used to just go over those gray lines. So that same smaller round brush. And wow, an hour and five minutes in and we are almost done, almost done. Still kind of twisting into it, diluting it, adding more water to it. Making sure the paint is smooth onto my brush. Add a little bit more water. There we go. And I'm just gonna play around with it and have some fun. I'm gonna start in the middle and kind of just go around each one. You see how I'm not covering the whole entire thing. I'm not making sure it's perfect. I'm just adding some accents of the white to each little section. And after we do the white and the black, the very last thing we're gonna do is touch up any areas in the background where we feel like we need to. See, I'm not covering the whole entire thing. I'm just adding some white to each one of these little areas. Now, I think when I do revisit this to do a more detailed um, approach, I'm going to use a smaller canvas. That way it won't take as long. Triangle. I'm not trying to make sure they're all the same width or anything like that. I'm just adding some accents of the white. That's all I'm doing. Don't forget to bring it off to the sides of your canvas, wherever that would be. Yep, nothing fancy. Piece of cake, piece of pie. Adding accents of the white to each little element. That's it. And if you ever feel like you've got too much white in any spot, remember you can always go back and touch it up and go back and cover up some of those lines with the gray that you did. Add some touches of white to these little curved areas down here. See, I'm not covering the whole line. I'm just adding some white to it. Help it stand out, give it more texture and dimension. All right, come to these lines also. Like I said, not covering up the whole thing. Just adding some white to each little area. Do not cover up the whole entire line. You do not want to lose all that detail that you did prior. Add a little bit more white right there. Just adding white here and there. That's all I'm doing. And see, all the lines aren't the same exact 
width or thickness or anything like that which is why I kept telling you don't worry too much about it. if it's perfect we're just gonna make it look pretty off the top and the sides of your canvas too. Don't neglect that. You want it to look uniform all the way around. Make sure I did that right here too. I say that all the time but mainly to remind my own self because I do forget sometimes. All right, just gonna do these little ones in here. I'm going to be kind of careful to use more so um, the tip of this brush for these little small ones in the middle because otherwise it will literally cover up the whole entire thing that we did. Of course I got a little piece of white paint right there. I'm just going to take it off with a wet brush. I just want to use the tip for these teeny tiny lines right here. Not covering up the whole thing, just adding little accents of this color. And I am going to bring it to a circle right there. Step back again. Step it back again. And of course, I'm going to add some white elements to here. And I'm going to, when we do the black, I'm going to be very sparingly with the black. Not going to use a lot of black. I'm going to actually use a smaller liner brush when we use the black. So I don't want the black to be too overpowering. Especially since we did a dark gray. So not making it perfect, just kind of adding some white here and there. Like I keep saying, you just want it to look pretty. If anyone comes up to your painting with the ruler, you don't want them to be your friend anyway. They're being judgmental. As long as it's pretty, you just want it to be pretty. We're gonna keep getting more and more advanced as we go along. So this is a beginner's painting tutorial. And look how good it looks. Even I wasn't overly particular or anything like that. I just made sure it looked nice. And right here, I'm just gonna do little arches. I'm not gonna to be too picky. Just kind of some little arches. Let me step back like I always do. All right. On the end of these little things where it kind of comes to a point or a triangle, use that same brush and do a little circle. Now look again, stepping back again. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and touch up any areas in the background. Mainly just some of the red areas is what I need to touch up. Make sure your brush is nice and clean, especially since we've been using gray. Remember, we deepen this red with a little bit of green not too much you want it kind of like a crimson color you don't want it too dark and i'm going to water it down some because we're just going to touch up any areas we're not trying to 
really cover up anything. And we just used pencil. We didn't use paint or anything like that when we originally did our lines. So it's not gonna take a whole lot to cover that up. So make sure you don't have too much water on your brush though, cause you don't want the paint running down your canvas. Now imagine if we went ahead and I had you sketch all this out and then paint in between each one of these things. That would have been a pain. So I wasn't gonna do that to y'all. All right. Up in here some. You can see I'm kind of just doing little squiggly lines. I'm not being too perfect. Just trying to make sure I've got some of those lines covered up. Mm. All right, and I think in here I'm gonna add some circles too of the white. So I'm gonna take out that same little round brush that we had. I'm gonna dilute some of that paint again. Especially with white, you see how thick it is, how it kind of lumps up too. You want it smooth, which is why I keep adding water to it to smooth it out. And white paint is typically the hardest to dilute because it's so thick. You see, I'm still twisting, twisting, twisting into it. Adding more water, thinning it down more. I want it a little bit thinner, just a little bit. Add more water, twist it around until you feel like it's a nice consistency. Y'all, I always get paint everywhere. I didn't even use this color. How do I have paint? All right. So in all these little triangles, I'm gonna do three little circles. Of course, the smaller circles, I mean, the smaller triangles, they're gonna be closer together. Um, the larger ones, they're gonna be further apart. Don't be too picky about it. You just want each one to have three circles. That's it. That's all it is to it. Just three circles. I'm not making sure they're all in the same exact spot. I'm just making sure they look consistent by having three circles on them. That's it. Bring it off to the sides of your canvas too. Like I keep saying, it just looks better. All right, I'm gonna step back again. That's pretty, okay. All right, I think I'm gonna do the accent of the black and I'm gonna leave it alone. Yep, then we're gonna be done. I'm gonna use a smaller brush though. Let me make sure I can find it. Here we go. So smaller than the brush that we were using, but not as small as a liner brush. And the same thing with black. You have to dilute it a lot, just like the white. You see how thick it is and how it kind of lumps up? You gotta add water to that. Thin it out. See, it takes water to thin that out. More water. Thin and thin and thin and thin and thin and thin and it out. I want this really thin because I don't want thick lines of the black. I just want to add accents of black here and there. 
so that might be good. Uh, a little bit more water, just so I don't have to keep stopping and adding more water to it. All right, that's good. I'm not diluting it anymore. That's good. And I'm just kind of here and there going to add some touches of black. Kind of just like we did with the white, but a lot softer, not as much. That's why we switched to a smaller brush. And I'm already diluting this again. I should have just diluted it with a larger brush and then just used this brush, but hey. We're going with it now. There we go. Just here and there. And see, I'm adding a lot less of the black than I did with the white. Just here and there. Just pretty much the areas where I put some white, I'm adding a little bit of accent of the black. Not covering up the whole thing, and I'm keeping the black pretty light. Not too heavy. I don't want to add too much black. And I actually like that we did the gray instead of doing the black. But if we did it in reverse, I probably would have did outlined everything in the black and then put some accents of gray around it. That would have looked nice too. Let's do one here. Just like we did with the white paint in here, you want to use more so just the tip of your paintbrush. And just add a little accents. Does it need to be perfect? Don't need to be too picky or too precise. All right, these lines up in here. Just add some black to them. And I noticed I didn't add any white right there. So I'm just going to go back and add a touch of white. And add some more black to it. There we go. All right. Pretty much wherever you put some white, add a little teeny tiny touch of the black. Do not cover up all of the white. You see how I'm just adding little touches of the black to where we put the white to add contrast. Just everywhere where I put some white paint, I'm adding some black to it. Just a touch. Not covering up everything, just a little bit. I'm kind of going in sections because that makes it easier to make sure you didn't miss any areas. All right. Start adding some blacks to some of these other areas. 
time to dilute the paint again, 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 again. And I think starting next week, I'm going to get back to doing some more flowers and some more still lives. I've been doing some more abstract, bohemian, pop art, whatever you want to call it type of thing. So I kind of want to get back on that vibe. I love flowers and nature and all that fun stuff. Where was I at? I think I was doing these lines. Yep. Any area where there is some white, add some black to it. Just adding touches of black to everywhere where I put some of the white paint. Not covering up everything, just adding accents of it. Let me step back again. Let's see, here's another spot. I forgot to add some white. So, going to do that. Add the white first. And then add some black to it. All right. These little circles. And then we're going to call it a day. Because as an artist, I can always find more and more things to add. But I said this was going to be a quick and easy tutorial. I don't want to make it too complex. I'm already liking the outcome and how it's looking, so I'm not going to keep going. Just add in little touches of black in these little circles. That's all I'm doing. Nothing complicated. Alright, I'm going to step back one last time, make sure I like what I'm looking at. Alright, I am very much suffice with this. I think this looks good. And this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this painting tutorial as well. Um, if you do have any suggestions, leave comments. Let me know some of the things that you want to see, any techniques that you would like to learn about, anything along those lines. And please, if you enjoyed my content, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you're interested in purchasing any of my original pieces or any prints or anything like that, all my information is below. Um, you can contact me via email or on my social media platforms, all that good stuff. But I'm liking this. We're going to leave it alone. I'm not going to keep talking. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Y'all have a great day. Bye.